Now, management of HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer is one of my favorite topics because we've done so well with this over the years. I mean, we, we've, it's probably taken, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years to get where we are today with it, but we've made huge advances. It used to be that all of these patients whose tumors had HER2-positive um, oncogene in them basically died. I mean, they did not do well at all, and especially with metastatic disease. They, they survived a very short period of time. Now, with the Cleopatra study, which I published about 10 years ago now, and a couple of years ago, the overall survival showing that these patients do exceedingly well with trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and ataxane first-line metastatic, we see that 37% of those patients at eight years are alive. Now that's just remarkable that this has happened. Since then, since that study, we have another exciting drug, trastuzumab derextican, which is really changing also the trajectory of the patient with HER2 positive breast cancer. These survival outcomes are absolutely phenomenal. Um, in the, the DESTINY trials, the DESTINY 2 and 3 trials that are comparing, one of them compared it to TDM1, the other one compared it to Physician's Choice, both of them showed an outstanding result with TDXD. So TDXD, or trastuzumab derextican, is now second line in the U.S. for sure, and if patients recur early, it, it even moves into the first line and it's being tested in first line, it's being tested in the neoadjuvant setting, and it's being tested post-neoadjuvant. So I think things are gonna really change over the next two or three years that we're gonna see that moving up much um, earlier on rather than having it in metastatic disease and then maybe metastatic disease will disappear. It's already decreasing because of the effective therapies that we've had. Now the caveat to Trastuzumab derextican is one of the toxicities is very serious, interstitial lung disease. In the, one of the destiny studies, it was 15% of patients who had this. Um, and in all the data altogether for trastuzumab derextican, probably one or 2% of patients actually can die from this. It's, it seemed to be decreasing in the more current studies because it's being recognized. So it's incredibly important if people are using this drug to recognize and to tell the patients if there's any symptoms of shortness of breath or anything like that, they need to be evaluated immediately and usually started on steroids and the TDXD stop. So we're hoping that's gonna, we're gonna see a decrease in that as people are more familiar with it. But it's very exciting because it's really changing things. It's also looking like it's, it's effective in patients who have brain metastases. Now the other treatment to catnib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor with capecitabine and trastuzumab, has shown also, and just with a recent update, really great survival benefit in patients who have active brain mets, and that, that's truly also remarkable. So I'm excited because the patients are doing well, they're living long. Um, you know, I personally have a patient that has had brain mets now for three years and is doing fantastic. She's actually on TDM1, which is also very active in her two positive brain metastasis. So it, it's very rewarding, certainly for the patients and also for the patients to know that so much research is being done and so many advances are being done.